What I want to do today is talk about the concept of opposition to the state within the tradition of anarchism, because we've mentioned in previous lessons that this is um, something that is very um, central and key to the concept of anarchism as a political idea. So I think it's important that we spend a little bit of time discussing where we get to a position where we are opposing the state and also what are the implications um, for a the existence of the state and therefore why we should see the state be opposed at least the existence of the state and we know that from previous lessons anarchism ultimately rejects the state the existence of the state is a ve ultimately a very anti-statist anti-statist uh, position and so it's important that we explore this concept in more detail. And generally speaking, anarchists argue that the state is not something that is required for the existence of society. So the state is not necessary for the existence of society. So we'll write this up here. The state is not, make it, make it very clear that it is not uh, necessary for the existence of society. But instead, it is something that is artificially constructed out of the existence of society. Okay, it's a it's a construct within the within society itself, not something that society relies on for its existence. And therefore, from this central beginning, uh, this starting point, we can understand how we can say, well, we can have opposition to the state effectively because. If we have a situation where, for the purposes of society to exist, the state is necessary, then a rejection of the state would necessarily entail a rejection of, um, or at least a collapse of society. Anarchists obviously don't think that because they reject the state and don't reject the existence of society. So therefore, we know that it means we don't need to have a state in order to have a functioning society. That's what anarchists believe. And really... That's the starting point from which we uh, start to think about different anarchist ideas. We don't just start by saying the state is bad or the state is coercive, etc., etc. These are key issues that we will talk about in a second. But we start by saying that the state is something that is not necessary for society. So not only is it something that we don't want actively because of things such as authority and coercion and restriction of personal autonomy, for example, but that it is also not something that we actually need for society at all. So if we don't need it and it creates these, um, you know, these poor conditions for people, then why should we have it? Therefore, we have a rejection of the state. That's ultimately what we're trying to um, talk about. And one key issue with the state is the ability of the state to claim, quote unquote, authority, the concept of authority from an anarchist tradition. Now, ultimately, when we talk about authority, we're talking about the, the right to command over others. OK, so authority. Authority within a general politically political philosophy sense is the right, right to command the right to command that is what we are ultimately talking about and we can e demonstrate the existence of commanding through the fact that people have to obey the law okay so the state commands over individuals through various different instruments including the law the existence of the law and ultimately this is something that is just um, prima facie uh, an accurate statement that the law restricts personal autonomy I don't, it's not something that um, any political theorist or any legal theorist would ever disagree with. The law does restrict personal autonomy. Now, for the most part, people would argue that this is a uh, the restriction of this personal autonomy is a good thing. You know, um, ultimately, the law says that we can't go out and murder somebody, for example. That is technically a restriction on personal autonomy, your personal autonomy to be able to murder somebody. But we would argue that that's a good thing because a society where people are allowed to murder is a society that wouldn't exist or uh, at least wouldn't exist for very long. So we have this authority being the right to command. OK, and we have uh, the command demonstrated through the practice of law. Practice of law. And we can just write here, this is demonstrated. OK. And this is ultimately where we're going to begin and talking about the, the concept of the state. We know that the state is uh, claims authority and that authority entails the right of command over individuals and that 
commanding over individuals is demonstrated through the practice of law and that law ultimately restricts personal autonomy autonomy over here and we have restriction restriction of personal autonomy we can see how this um, th this line of logic seems to uh, make some kind of intuitive sense at least intuitively now carrying on with this principle and, and going further and further we have to talk about the fact that we have the exercising of power and the uh, the entailment of uh, coercion effectively and because we're talking about the ability to command and we're talking about the um, force that uh, the state can apply on people to obey law these are shown through certain degrees of different kinds of power and now power in this instant instance sorry is examples of the forcing of people to obey the law so not only do we have a situation where the law exists that people are obligated to obey but the state also enforces um, uh, enforces the law through the exercising of power it exerts power on individuals and this can be uh, the power that the state is visible uh, has sorry is visible in the laws that it creates but it is also visible in the ways in which those laws are enforced so power can be seen um, if we take over here power it can be seen through the creation of law the creation of law which is ultimately something that restricts personal autonomy so restricts autonomy restricts autonomy as well as the enforcement of law enforcement of the law again this is something that is demonstrated through a number of different institutions so for example the police and the judicial system are two examples of this police and then judicial judicial systems these are put in place to enforce the law and they ultimately this enforcement of the law is something that will further restrict personal autonomy because if you do something that is against the law okay that is not necessarily in and of itself something that is um, a restriction of personal autonomy because you can still do it technically you can still go out and murder somebody if you wanted to but a, a further restriction on personal autonomy is the fact that the state will enforce using power and using um, power and powerful institutions such as the police and judicial system will enforce the law against you which in that in turn would restrict personal autonomy so I mean, the most obvious egregious example of this would be the police arresting you. That is a, you know, physical autonomy and personal autonomy. Any kind of autonomy is restricted if the police were to lock you and put you in prison, for example. Moreover, we find that according to anarchism, there are also hidden ways in which uh, the state controls society, in which the state, the, the state controls society. Because it's not just the case that society is controlled using um, these um, quite explicit um, exercises of power, you know, the, uh, the the forcing of society to obey law and to enforce the law using things like the police and judicial systems. But there are also more subtle hidden ways or implied ways in which um, the state controls society. And one of this is, for example, the pursuit of uh, statist ideology. So the pursuit of ideology, this is, can be something that is done uh, in the educational systems. Educational systems. Now, an extension of this, if we look at a variation of anarchism, when we look at, for example, anarcho-communism, anarcho-communism, according to anarcho-communism, this concept of um, using um, enforcing power and enforcing um, statist ideology uh, through hidden means this is something that doesn't just happen um, in regard to the concept of of the state but also the concept of capitalism um, so this is where let me put an over there this is where we see the 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 intersection if you will between 
Um, anarchism in its just purest form, the rejection of the state, the rejection of unjust hierarchies, and then also the anarcho-communism, the, the concept of um, mixing these ideas together and having an anti-capitalist, anti-statist um, uh, concept of political theory. And so therefore we see some um, mixing uh, in this regard. And ultimately, when we get onto anarcho-communism, we'll talk about this in more detail. Finally, a person is forced to comply with the rules of the state, and this is something that would restrict individualist thinkings and individualism in general. Individualism. And by extension, we argue that the fact that we are restricting this, uh, effectively we're saying that you can live in this society, okay, you can enjoy the benefits of this society, but you have to obey these kinds of rules. We have to obey the rules of the state, the law that the state imposes, and the law that the state enforces, okay, and this therefore restricts individualist thinking. And by extension, an anarchist would argue that this is a coercive structure. This is an example of coercion because you are coerced into um, being able to accept the, uh, you know, the positives of a society because you have to accept the law that is created and the law that is enforced. And so therefore, this concept of the state, uh, this concept of the state, if we will, OK, has the has uh, authority. Because it has the ability to um, command, uh, command over others, and this commanding is is seen through the creation of law, the creation of law, and this creation of law it sh shows the, the the power of the state, the, the the state exerting power, and it is also power is also exerted through the enforcement, enforcement of law which ultimately will restrict individualism okay restrict individualism and will therefore lead to and be coercive uh, coercion so we have this flow chart here okay now this isn't um something that is explicitly stated in, in anarchist text. They don't, you wouldn't see a diagram of this in, in a work by Bakunin, for example. But you can see how these things come together and are linked together in these different ways. And we can see how we can get from the existence of the state and all of the things that are implied with the existence of the state, okay? And what all of these things do to the individual, i.e. restrict individualism, and how this ultimately is a coercive structure. And therefore, after all of this, we would see that we have an, uh, a rejection, a rejection of the state, of the state, and then we are done.